Okay. Alright, we should be live. Wonderful. Okay, so this is quotation illumination number two. Right? So we did a number one and now we're doing number two. Alright, it went well the first time, so hopefully it will go well the second time. Alright, so let's jump in and see what it's all about. Well, in this live English lesson, we're going to analyze inspiring quotes from successful people. Hmm. There are many people out there who have lived incredible lives, right? And they've said some amazing things. And it would make sense if we listen to them, right? And we learn from them. Mm. We can also use it to boost our English, right? Okay, so let's not waste any time. Let's jump right in, okay? All right, so first, oh, we have this lovely picture. I mean, it's really nice. We have the blue water. All right, we have the blue water. Uh, we have a lady who's sitting with her hands kind of folded, her fingers interlaced behind her head. Uh, she has a sleeveless shirt. We could probably say a tank top. Might be part of her swimsuit. I don't know. She has a whole bunch of bracelets and stuff on her wrists. And she looks quite tan, right? Like she's been out in the sun for a while. And it looks like to me she has a, a red hat. And her hair is back in a ponytail, and she's sitting in a kayak, uh huh, with a paddle that has two sides, right? Okay, and she's just like taking it all in, as in just like ah, oh, it looks wonderful. The mount mountains in the background, the crystal clear water. Mm hmm. All right. So this is the background for our first quote of the of the night for me. Okay. All right. Here we go. This is the first quote. All right. It says, Your attitude, not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. Hmm. So I put a couple words that are in green, right? And the idea is that these words are a little more advanced in English, right? Uh, so they all end with tood, right? Attitude, aptitude, altitude. Okay, and the person who said this quote was Zig Ziglar, right? Okay, ah, in the comments, UK, UK Kawhi says, hello, hello, hello. All right, so in this quote, uh, how about we'll do pronunciation first, and then we'll talk about the meaning of the words, okay, and the meaning of the quote, all right? So here we go. Repeat out loud after me. Your attitude, not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. Okay, so if you're doing pronunciation, put some apples in the comments. It lets me know you're uh, participating in the lesson. Okay, so attitude, I think we understand. It's just how you're acting, right? How you feel, how you look at things. Are you happy, sad, frustrated, stuff like that? Now we're talking about your aptitude. Hmm. So this might be a good word to look up. What does aptitude mean? Hmm. Uh -huh. Let's see, we have another person in the comments. It looks like your name is in Arabic, and I'm sorry I do not read Arabic, but uh, if, if it's Arabic, it's either Farsi or Arabic, I think. Um, but I would say hello and welcome. Okay, so let's take a look. What does aptitude mean? And let's put it in the dictionary. Mm -hmm. So it'll probably give us some synonyms, right? So, okay, let's see what they say. Aptitude. 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 Uh-huh. Okay, so aptitude means a natural ability to do something. Okay, so here's an example sentence. Children children with an aptitude for painting and drawing. So these would be children who have the skills, who have a good ability to draw. Okay, so aptitude is a natural ability to do something. All right, so let's bring that back here and we'll put it underneath. So aptitude is a natural ability to do something, all right? So first it says your attitude, okay? How you look at life, how you feel about things, you know, what's going on inside there. Not your aptitude. So not your natural ability to do something. So the first part is saying that your attitude is more important than your ability. 
Hmm. Mm hmm. So, uh, that's the first part, right? So, aptitude is natural ability to do something. Okay? So, your attitude, your mindset, your way of looking at the world, not your ability, will determine your altitude. All right, so let's take a look at altitude. What the heck does altitude mean? If you know in the comments, tell me what does altitude mean? See if you can beat me before I go to the dictionary so we can see some uh, synonyms and stuff. All right, so what does altitude mean? You might hear this word if you're flying on an airplane or if you fly an airplane or if you're going up in the sky maybe or a mountain. Altitude. Hmm, what does altitude mean? Well, I think we'll check it out. Here we go, let's put it in. Altitude. All right, let's hear their pronunciation because Google has a, a American pronunciation just like I do, so we'll see if they say it how I do. Altitude. Hmm. Altitude. Altitude. Okay, so the definition is the height of an object or point in relation to sea level or ground level. Okay, so it's altitude just means how high something is, right? All right, so let's take a look. We're going to put that back here. All right, the height of an object or point in relation to sea level or ground level. All right, so when we say sea level, let's go, maybe we'll take a look at a picture so we can get an idea what is sea level. All right, so sea level, okay, so it's just uh, the level of the water, right? The level of the oceans, All right? So if we're looking at this picture right here, here's the land over here and here's the sea. So the sea is moving back and forth, but this is sea level. And as you go inland, you'll have the mountains, they go up and they go higher and stuff like that, right? Okay, All right, so let's go back. So we go, we have aptitude, which is your natural ability to do something. We have altitude, which is the height of an object, or basically just how high something is. All right, so let's figure out um, what this quote means, all right? So your attitude, not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. Hmm. So, I mean, another way to say this quote is that the way you think about life, your philosophy on life, your mindset is more important than your ability. Because maybe you have wonderful ability, but your attitude sucks. <laughs> so if you have all the talent in the world, but you don't do anything and your attitude is like, Ugh, I hate people and it's bad, blah, 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 then it doesn't matter if you're the most talented person in the world if your attitude sucks, right? Okay. So, your attitude is more important than your ability, and that will determine your altitude, will determine how successful you are, how high you can achieve. So, here we go. Your attitude will determine your altitude. Hmm. So, here we're not talking about like flying in an airplane. We're talking about the ability of a person to achieve something, right? To do something, to... Uh, you know, move forward in their life and be successful, right? Okay, and so this quote was said by Zig Ziglar, all right? Let's do pronunciation one more time for the whole quote. So repeat after me. Here we go. Your attitude, not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. Okay, so this was said by Zig Ziglar. Let's take a look. Who is Zig Ziglar? All right. Okay, so Zig Ziglar was an American author. And here's his full name, Hillary Hinton Zig Ziglar. That's a very unique name. All right, Hillary Hinton sounds like Hillary Clinton, but it's Hillary Hinton. Zig Ziglar was an American author, salesman, and motivational speaker. Uh-huh. I've watched his videos on YouTube, um, uh, and he's just, yeah, I like how he speaks, very, very motivational, full of positive energy, and he says stuff that makes sense, right? Okay, so he was born in November 6th, or on November 6th, 1926, in Coffee County, Alabama, in the United States. 
So in case you're curious where Alabama is in the United States, let's take a look. Alabama on US map. All right, here we go. So this is Alabama down here. It's right next to Florida, and there's Georgia, South Carolina, I think Tennessee, and is this Arkansas? Probably should know. <laughs> okay, so here is, uh, right, that's Alabama right there. And so it's a bit warmer than where I'm from, especially in the winter. I'm from Minnesota, way up here, fairly close to Canada. Uh-huh. Okay. So we have Zig Ziglar, motivational speaker, very successful, very successful guy, and he wanted to share his uh, experience with the world, and that's probably why he became a motivational speaker. Uh huh. And he died on November twenty eighth, two thousand twelve. All right. So he lived a, a a good long life, and he did a lot of good things for people. Okay. All right. Let's see. Lee Huda says hello, teacher Michael. Hello, hello. And uh, the Arabic name says, my name is Haidar of the Iraq. Okay, well, welcome, Haidar. Nice to meet you. Welcome. All right, so let's move on to the next quote. And before we see the next quote, let's look at a nice picture. Oh, it's nice. Hopefully, you can hear the music in the background, too. I think it should be relaxing. I think when we talk about quotes and inspiring stuff, it's great to be in a relaxed mood because we can see more clearly and think more clearly. Okay, so let's see. You guys help me in the comments. How can we describe this picture? Well, we can say it's beautiful, <laughs> but we need more details. Can you guys help me? What do we see in this picture? Hmm... I see quite a few things. I don't see any people. Well, I see my face, but I'm not actually in the picture. All right, so what do you guys see in the picture? All right, if I don't see any comments, then I'll describe the picture. And either way, we can, you know, figure out what's going on. All right, all right, let's see. Well, I'm looking. I don't see any comments, okay? So I shall describe the picture and feel free to jump in and help me describe it. Uh huh. Leah Huda says, a meadow with flowers. Yes, so we have a nice open meadow. We could, we could almost say an open field, except if we say field, it kind of gives the idea that there's a farmer. And way up high here by these mountains, I don't know if there are any farmers. It might be difficult to grow crops. So I think a meadow is probably the best description here. And we have lots of pink or purple flowers mixed in with the long grass, right? Uh -huh. And there's a tree um, uh, with pink leaves, I guess, or red leaves or something like that. All right, let's see. Leah Hood says in the background we can see mountains. Yes. And we could say we see snow-covered mountains, right? So they're all covered, right? Uh-huh. We can say mountains covered with snow. We can also say snow covered mountains. That's right. It looks like there's mist or clouds that have come down and settled in with the uh, with the the mountain peaks. The peaks are the top parts, right? Let's see. UK Kawhi says, "What was the question? Uh, the question is, uh, how can we describe this picture, right? So, what do we see in the picture?" Guzal Gaisini, Gaisini, Gaisina, Gaisina says beautiful landscape. Yes, we could say it's very picturesque. The word picturesque means beautiful and nice to look at. Let's take a look. Picturesque, it's a good word. There it is, picturesque. All right, let's hear their pronunciation, see if I'm doing it correctly. Picturesque. Ah. Picturesque. Picturesque, uh-huh. So it's visually attractive, especially in a quaint or pretty style. Okay. Quaint is kind of like cute or neat or lovely, kind of. So if you say it's a picturesque view, then it's like, wow, it's wonderful, it's beautiful. Uh-huh. Okay, so if we had to sum up, if I sum, summarize this picture in like one sentence, I would say we're looking out over a meadow filled with flowers. And in the background, there is there are mountain peaks covered in snow. Right? It's probably a cold day, especially if we go farther up on the mountains. But down here, it might not be so cold. Okay. All right. Let's get to the next quote. Here we go. All right. 
Da -da -da. Okay, so let's do pronunciation first, and then we will jump in and analyze the words because this one's kind of interesting. This one uses uh, some informal in informal language. Okay, here we go. So repeat after me. To succeed in life, you need three things: a wishbone, a backbone, and a funny bone. Hmm. Okay, so the lady who said it was Reba McIntyre. And I suppose we can quick look at who is Reba McIntyre, right, to give us an idea what does she do. Uh, she is a singer, a country western singer. And here we go. So Reba McIntyre, American singer. Reba Nell McIntyre is an American country singer, songwriter, actress, and record producer. She began her career in the music industry as a high school student singing in the Kiowa High School Band on local radio shows with her siblings and at rodeos. Hmm. And just in case you're not sure what a rodeo is, it's uh, very common in the southern part of the U.S., Texas, you know, Oklahoma, uh, even up in like South Dakota, rodeo. All right, so this is like a rodeo. They have different competitions, riding horses, riding a bull, uh, like bull riding. There we go. Uh-huh. Well, I think they're a little crazy because <laughs> the bulls are so powerful. But yeah, so this is what happens at a rodeo. It's very American. Uh, and I think maybe they do something similar in like uh, in Argentina because they have like cowboys and stuff too. But uh, yeah, so this would be like an American rodeo. It's basically a competition where they, they show their skills and ability to ride animals, maybe race the animals, do stuff like that. Okay, so let's go back. So this is Reba McIntyre, and she's a, an American singer. Uh-huh. All right. All right, let's see. Leah Huda says, Teacher, I liked your live t this morning. It's unique and interesting and unique from a super teacher. You mean when I talked about my breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> That's about as informal as you can get. We talked about sliced bananas and my cereal and stuff like that. Uh huh. All right, I gotta stay focused. We're talking about inspirational quotes. All right, here we go. So, to succeed in life, you need three things a wishbone, a backbone, and a funny bone. Okay, so let's start with a wishbone. Let's see. What? is, and I'll make it a phrase, a wishbone. Hmm. Does anybody have an idea what is a wishbone? All right, let's make that bold and I'll make it underlined. What is a wishbone? Hmm. <laughs> Guzal Gaisina says, I overslept live. <laughs> no worries. YouTube records it, so you can always go back later and see what you missed if you want. Okay, does anybody have an idea what is a wishbone? Right? Ah, UK Kawhi says hope. Yes, very good. So wishbone is, it's an actual thing, but it represents something. Good, good, good. So let's, first we're going to take a look at a wishbone. Right? Goodbye bull riding, hello wishbone. Okay, so, uh, let's see, It's I remember growing up like a chicken wishbone. <laughs> when you eat chicken and you have the full chicken, sometimes uh, you get the bone, right? That's here. And it, it's kind of like, they call it a wishbone because two people grab it and they pull. And whoever gets the bigger section, they say that your wish will come true. Something like that. So it's kind of a kind of a game I guess but the idea is that you're hoping something will happen you're wishing something will happen and you pull it apart and when it breaks whoever has the bigger piece uh, their wish is supposed to come true I guess okay so a wishbone uh -huh, it represents hope uh -huh, let's see what, what happens in the dictionary if we put it in there all right let's hear pronunciation wishbone wishbone okay so the thing, the wishbone, is a forked bone. It's called the furcula. Furcula? All right. 
between the neck and breast of a bird. All right. So according to a popular custom, this bone from a cooked bird is broken by two people with the holder of the longer portion being entitled to make a wish. Yes, that's that's exactly what I remember growing up. All right. So let's put that here. All right. Okay. I think we could do pronunciation. Repeat after me. Here we go. According to a popular custom, this bone from a cooked bird is broken by two people, with the holder of the longer portion being entitled to make a wish. Mm hmm. Okay, and if you're doing pronunciation, apples in the comments. Love them. Okay, so let's see. So a wishbone. Wishbone represents the idea that you're hoping for something. Just like UK Kawhi said, you're wishing for something, right? Okay, so let's do a backbone. Let's see. What is a backbone? Hmm. So what do you think? If we say a backbone, what does that represent? Because it's similar to a wishbone, that it's an actual bone, right? It's part of the body. But what do you think it represents? All right. Uh, Leila Almeida is here. Hello and welcome. All right. So what does a... Aha! Vera Kalugina says a spine. Yes. Okay. So if we put a backbone and we're just looking for the actual physical item, right? So let's look in, uh, so for, before we looked at a wishbone, now let's look at a backbone. Okay, yeah, just like Vera Kalugina, Kalugina said, it's a spine, right? So let's see, what, what do they give us in the dictionary? Uh-huh, she says vertebrae, yes, vertebrae. Let's hear the pronunciation. Backbone. 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 Backbone, right, there we go. The series of vertebrae extending from the skull to the pelvis, the spine. Okay, so that is what it is. That's what the actual thing is. Uh huh. But if someone says to you, get a backbone, hmm, what do you think they mean? Because here it's more like an idiom now, because it has a hidden meaning. If someone comes up to you or you're talking with someone, and it's probably not like a super happy topic, and they say to you, come on, get a backbone. What do you think they're saying? Because literally, you know, you have a backbone. <laughs> you have the bones in your body, but it's an, also an idiom. Get, the back, get a backbone. Get a backbone. Come on, get a backbone. What does it mean? Hmm... What do you guys think? What does it mean to have a backbone? Get a backbone. We can also say have a backbone. Uh-huh. So what is the idea? If someone says get a backbone. Hmm. Well, what it means is you need to be more confident and make decisions. Uh-huh. You need to be more confident and make decisions so if we put it really short we could say be bold right do something make a decision get a backbone right because if you don't have a backbone i mean imagine if suddenly the backbone in your body poof disappeared you'd like go down like this right because there's no way to support uh-huh leahuda says will or support right if you have a backbone you have confidence you're probably bold you're making choices you're making decisions right okay so so far to succeed in life to be successful in life to find your way you need three things a wishbone hope that could be you know a good attitude about the future a backbone you need the ability to make decisions right be confident be bold all right let's get to the last one and a funny bone. Hmm. What is a funny bone? <laughs> okay. Good, good. We're doing good vocabulary today. All right. Let's see. I'll put some quotes around it. So it's in a, it's a phrase. A funny bone. 
All right, UK Kawhi says humor. Yes, very good. Okay, so ah yes, Guzal Gaisina says sense of humor. Right, right, and it's interesting. Uh huh. It's actually a thing. It's actually a part of your body. <laughs> All right, let's hear their pronunciation. Funny bone. Funny bone. One more time. Funny bone. Funny bone. Okay. So, it's the part of the elbow over which the ulnar nerve passes. A knock on the funny bone may cause numbness and pain along the forearm and hand. Alright, so let's talk about that. So first, the literal meaning, a funny bone. And let's see if we can, uh, if it'll show us a picture. Because it'll probably just show us the elbow. Let's take a look. Alright, oh good, good, they show us something more. So the funny bone is right here. Let's see. Aha. Uh -huh. So the, there's a nerve that passes by there. And if you get hit on the funny bone in just the right place, all of a sudden your hand is like tingling. <laughs> and it feels kind of numb. Like the, you're losing feeling. It doesn't feel right. And it's like, ah, right. So it could be painful. It could also just kind of be uncomfortable. It's happened to me before, but it's usually just a temporary thing and then you feel better and it's no problem, right? Okay, so, all right. So a funny bone is, that's what it just means, you know, the actual thing. But just like you guys said, a funny bone is a sense of humor, right? So, you guys tell me, why do we need to have a sense of humor in life? Why, why do we need to be able to laugh about things? Why is that good? Can you guys tell me? Let me take a drink of water. Why is it good to have a sense of humor? Or why is it bad to not have a sense of humor as we go through life? As we try to succeed in life. Ah, UK Kawhi says, because life is never flat. I understand what you're saying. Life is full of ups and downs. Ups and downs, right? So if we're if we're if we don't have the ability to laugh, we're gonna stress out like crazy. See, Leah Huda says, in order to keep going in your life, even though you have difficult circumstances, yes, it's guaranteed that life will be difficult, right? That's just how it goes. So if we can somehow learn to either laugh or find a little bit of humor in stressful situations, I think one will be more mentally healthy and probably physically healthy and, you know, be able to survive the difficult situations. That's the idea, right? Okay. So once again, the quote, to succeed in life, you need three things, a wishbone, all right? And to me, this means you need to have kind of a positive outlook for the future, right? I can do it. Things can happen. Yes, we can do it. I'm, yeah, uh, uh. <laughs> you need to have a backbone. You need to have the ability to make decisions, be confident, be bold and move forward. It means like action, making decisions. And a funny bone, right? So you need to be able to appreciate humor or find, be able to laugh at something. Even just to laugh at ourselves, right? If we make a silly mistake, we could get all pissed off and scream at ourselves. Or we could be like, you know, the, <laughs> hopefully I can learn from this crazy mistake, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do pronunciation one more time. If you're doing pronunciation, apples in the comments. Here we go. Repeat after me. To succeed in life, you need three things. A wishbone, a backbone, and a funny bone. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Vera Kalugina says, humor helps to survive. Yes, humor helps us to survive and deal with life and make it through the difficult times. Mm-hmm. All right. Good, good, good. All right, so that was by Reba McIntyre. Once again, she's a, a famous American singer. Okay, all right, let's go to the next picture. All right, this one's bright. All right, can you guys tell me 
What do you see in the picture? You can tell me what's the location, what's happening, what are the people doing? What do you think? Can you guys tell me what's happening in the picture? And I might be able to move it up just a little. There we go. All right, so what do we see in this picture? Can you guys help me? All right. Let me pause for a moment and take another drink of water. Okay, so what's happening in this picture? I see interesting things. Mm -hmm. I see a couple of people. What can we say? What are they doing? What might there be re their relationship with each other? Hmm. All right, UK Kawhi says a lovely couple. Yes. So if we say a couple, we're assuming that they're romantically involved, right? We're not thinking like brother and sister. We're not thinking like friends. We're thinking a couple means, you know, they're married, their boyfriend, girlfriend, something like that. All right, let's see. Leah Huda says a shiny sun. We can say on the horizon. Uh-huh. In the background, on the horizon. Uh-huh. All right. Guzal Gaisina says rocks in the background. Yes, big rocks. <laughs> so we can kind of say they're, they're like mountains, right? Uh, it's like a very rocky place. And there's, uh, let's see, right? Vera Kalugina says it's a sunset. Okay, that's right. It could be a sunset or maybe it's a sunrise. I'm not quite sure if it's super early in the morning or if it's late in the evening when the sun's going down. All right. What is this down below? What do you think? What is this over here? I think you can see my mouse. What would this be down here? We could say it's down in the valley, but what's at the bottom of the valley? What is down here? What do we call it? And it, I think it goes under here and it comes out over there. Or maybe it's going this way. All right. What do we call this down here? Let's see. I'm sure someone knows the answer. All right, what do we call this down here? All right, Vera Kalugina says this couple adores the nice sunset. Sure, sure. All right, and what do we call this down here? What do you think it is? So it's down in the valley. It's down, uh, you know, down at the bottom of the mountains, down at the bottom of the rocks. What do we think this is right here? And it goes around and it goes over here. Aha, uh -huh, there it is. Uh, Guzal Gaisina says a river runs below. Yes, a river is flowing through the valley. A river is running through the valley. And I'm not sure if the water's flowing this way or if it's flowing this way, but it's a river. Uh -huh. Leila Almeida says the couple is talking on the mountains. The sunrise is beautiful. Yes. All right. And they're both wearing hats. They have shirts on. Hers is a sleeveless shirt. His is a short sleeve shirt. He has shorts. We can't see what kind of uh, pants she has. But we could say they're sitting close together and it looks like they might be touching. We can't say that they're embracing because they're not hugging each other. They don't have their arms around each other, but they're sitting very close, right? Very close, just about touching, right? Okay. Uh, we can't see her hand, so her, maybe her hand is touching him. We don't know. Uh -huh. Lee Huda says, teacher, isn't that the Grand Canyon? Hmm, I think the Grand Canyon is actually even bigger. <laughs> but this maybe it could be a section of the Grand Canyon or maybe the Colorado River, possibly. Uh, but I don't I don't know the exact location, but it could be in the area of the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. All right, so let's go to the quote. Here we go. All right, here we go. So repeat after me. Let's do pronunciation. Da -da -da. If you go through life being casual, you will end up being a casualty. Hmm. All right, so once again, if you go through life being casual, you will end up a casualty. Okay, so I made a couple words green here. Before we get to the words, let's take a look at the person who said this quote. His name is Les Brown. Another guy I recommend. He's got some great stuff to say. Let's take a look at him. Here we go. So this is Les Brown. He's an American author. 
I would also say he's a motivational speaker. Mm -hmm. Here we go. So Leslie Calvin, Les Brown, is an American motivational speaker, author, radio DJ, former television host. As a former politician, he was a member of the Ohio House of Representatives. As a motivational speaker, he uses the catchphrase, it's possible, and teaches people to follow their dreams as he learned to do. All right. So he's still alive. He was born uh, on February 17th, 1945, and now he's 74 years old. He was born in Liberty City, Miami, Florida, United States. All right. So let's just make sure we know where Florida is. Florida uh, uh, on U.S. map. Here we go. Okay, so here is Florida. I think, was it the other lady before she was from, or Zig Ziglar was from Alabama right here. All right, so there is Florida. All right, let's go back. So this is Les Brown, another motivational speaker. You can find him on YouTube all over. Just type in his name and there's lots of great stuff from him. Okay, so here we go. The first part of the quote. If you go through life being casual, hmm, what does it mean? What does the word, maybe we'll do, well, first we'll do the word. All right, so we have casual. We'll talk about what does that mean. But we're going to also do the phrase being casual. Right, right. Let's do it. So we have two here. It's very good to learn vocabulary words in phrases, right? Because that's how we talk. We don't talk with just single words. We talk in phrases. So it's good to learn the meaning of the words, but it's even better to learn the meaning of the words in context, in the phrases. All right. So let's see. UK Kawhi says easy. Ooh. Not bad, not bad. All right, let's see. So if you go through life being casual, all right, let's see. Let's put it in the dictionary and see if we can find a definition which fits our situation. All right, all right. Let's hear their their uh, pronunciation. Here we go. Casual. 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 Uh huh. Woo. Leila Almeida, I like it. If you live without goals, you end up without discoveries. Ooh. I like that. That's a good quote by itself. I like it. Thank you. Okay, so casual. Hmm, because you've probably heard of casual clothing, the opposite of formal clothing, but here we're not talking about clothing. All right, number one, here we go. Perfect. Relaxed and unconcerned. The important part here is unconcerned. It's like you don't really care. So relaxed isn't so bad, but when you put it together with unconcerned, uh, you know, things aren't always going to be so good. All right, so that's a perfect definition for our situation here. So let's put it in there. In this situation, right, it means relaxed and unconcerned. And unconcerned means like you don't care, right? All right, Vera Kalugina says, not serious. Leila Almeida says, thank you. No, thank you. Wonderful. I like that. I'm going to read it one more time. If you live without goals, you end up without discoveries. All right. Let's see. I'm going to put it to show everyone. Here we go. Let's see if we can do it. Right there. If you can see it right here, I'll highlight it. I'll highlight it. Leila Almeida, if you live without goals, you end up without discoveries. I like that. That's very poetic. I like that. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good, good. I think it 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 uh, represents exactly what we're trying to talk about. Good. Okay, so we have casual, which means relaxed and unconcerned. So if you're being casual, it's the same, right? You're being relaxed and unconcerned. Let's see. Being Right? So in other words, you don't really care, right? Uh, you just, you could say you just float through life. Right? Ah, whatever happens, eh, it just happens, whatever, whatever. Okay, so if you're being casual, right, you don't really care. You just float through life and whatever happens, you bump around. 
Huh? Leah Huda says, if you don't have a goal, your life is going to be useless or meaningless. All right. Right? And it's similar to goal is if you don't have a direction, if you don't have a way to go, at least some direction, someone will someone else will find a direction for you and it might not actually be what you want. Okay, so here we go. The first part, if you go through life being casual, if you live your life too relaxed, you don't care and you're just kind of like, eh, whatever. Okay, second part, you will end up a casual T. Hmm. Let's see. What do we mean by casual T? All right. Let's see what we have here. Let's make it bold and we're going to underline it. All right. So what is a casual T? Hmm. And the phrase here we would do is end up a casual T. All right. Ah, Leah Huda says, like a victim. All right, all right. Uh huh. I see Justin Bieber, true believer, <laughs> says, hi. Is it the real Justin Bieber or is it just a true believer? Okay, so a casualty, let's see. Leah Huda says, like a victim. Uh huh. It's the right idea. Something bad happens to you. So let's take a look. Casualty. All right, so we had casual. And we have casual T. Vera Kalugina says, if you have no goals, you will be a loser. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. So we're talking about casual T. Let's hear the pronunciation. Here we go. Casual T. Casual T. Casual T. Casual T. And it's good you say it with us. When I say us, I mean myself and also this female voice. Casual T. Casual T. So repeat out loud and you can get the pronunciation. Okay. All right. A person killed or injured in a war or accident. Right. Uh huh. It can also be a person or thing badly affected by an event or situation. Hmm. All right. So let's take both of those definitions. I think they're both pretty good. All right, so a person killed or injured in a war or accident. And we're going to take the other one too, because I think it's very good. It fits our situation. Here we go. A person or thing badly affected by an event or a situation. So if you're a casualty, something bad happens, right? Uh huh. Let's see. Justin Bieber says one request. Okay, so say it. Say, what is your request? All right, so I'm going to move forward. Let's see, end up a casualty. All right, so first casualty is a person killed or injured in a war accident or a person or thing badly affected by an event or situation. So it's very common to say maybe a casualty of an accident, right? A car accident. A car accident. There were, there were, you know, five casualties in the car accident. It was a terrible car accident. People were hurt. People went to the hospital. I remember when I was a police officer, I went to many accidents. And there's a lot of crazy stuff that happens. And it, yeah, and people go to the hospital, people die. There's blood and all that stuff. But a casualty is someone who was a victim of a car crash, right? And they may have been at fault. Or maybe they were an innocent victim. I don't know. But either way, something bad happened to them as a result of the car crash. All right. Okay. So if you end up a casualty, what do you think? What do you think? What does it mean to end up a casualty? Hmm. Hmm. So it's kind of the same here, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have a car accident, but you're going to end up a casualty. All right, so you're going to end, or re the result will be, uh, the result will be not so good, <laughs> right? So you probably won't have success with something. <laughs> you cute Kawhi says, I'm a casualty of love. <laughs> I'm going to show that one. That's good. All right, I'm a casualty of love. <laughs> 
Uh huh. And that fits, right? You could say it. And depending on your situation, it could be something that you like, something that you don't like, or. <laughs> All right. Leah Huda says the result will be worse than you imagined. Yes. I'm going to put that in here then. Let's see. We'll copy this. We'll make another one here. Move this out of the way. All right. So I'm going to copy exactly what Leah Huda said. Uh huh. All right. The result. Oop. I need a T there. The, the result will be worse than you imagined. Uh huh. Uh huh. Right. All right, the result will be worse than you imagined, right? So if you end up a casualty because you didn't pl plan well in the present, you went through life being casual, right? So you didn't really care about things, you didn't have good focus, and you didn't move forward with a good plan, then you'll end up, things won't be so great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, let's see. Justin Bieber says, do you want... Do I want you to subscribe to my channel? Well, that depends on you. If you find value in our channel, great. Subscribe. It's up to you. That's the wonderful thing of YouTube. It's voluntary. Nobody's forcing you to do anything. Right? Uh-huh. Okay. All right. So Vera Kalugina says an accident. Uh -huh. Casualty could be the result of an accident. That's right. Okay. So this was a quote from Les Brown. Once again, let's do pronunciation. Repeat after me. Improve your pronunciation. If you go through life being casual, you will end up a casual T. Okay. If you're doing pronunciation, put some apples in the comments, right? And this was a quote from Les Brown. Okay, so moving forward. Woo, time's going quickly. Here we go. Aha, uh -huh. more mountains. All right, so this picture is a little bit unique. Can you guys tell me what you see? What do you see in this picture? Uh huh. All right, what do we see in this picture? In the background? On the horizon, in the background, we can see mountains that are covered in snow, right? In the foreground, in the front of the picture, the foreground, what do we see? What do we see that is leading away or leading up into the mountains, maybe? Or leading forward? All right, Guzal Gaisina says mountains covered with snow. That's right. <laughs> UK Kawai says the way to heaven. So after you're a casualty of love... You might need to take this trip and go on your way to heaven. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Let's see. Leah Huda says a long road of cobbled co cobbled stone. Uh huh. I think you mean cobbled stone. Let's look it up. All right, cobbled stone. It's with an O. Cobblestone. There we go. Cobblestone. All right. So this is cobblestone. All right. So I usually would say that cobblestone, the, they're smaller and they're put closer together and it's more orderly, right? There's more organization when they built it, right? So this is cobblestone and this looks like an old one. Uh-huh. Cobblestone Road. All right. And let's see. The one that we have. <laughs> Layla Almeida says, I feel cold right now. <laughs> Uh-huh. But it's also, I think it's a beautiful picture. And it's better that we're looking at it from here where we're warm, right? Okay, so I wouldn't call this a cobblestone road. It's the right idea. However, with cobblestone, I think it's it's more organized. They're tighter together and it's easier to, you know, you can bring a wagon or you can drive on top of it. On this one, I would call them hmm, a stone path. That's what I would say. A stone path. Let's take a look. A stone path. Well, hmm. Yeah, something more like this. But this is like organized in, in your garden. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Stone path in the mountains. Let's see. 
Okay, here we go. I think it'll work. There we go. It's kind of like a stone path, right? So it's not as neat as like a cobblestone. It's going to be difficult to drive over and it's up and down. But it's still easier maybe than walking without a stone path. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we summarize this picture, we could say there's a beautiful picturesque view of mountains in the background. In the foreground, there is, uh, I guess, long grass with pink flowers, and there is a stone path leading away and up into the mountains, something like that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a cloudy day, it's probably cold out, and it's good to go inside and sit by uh, a fireplace. Mm -hmm. so this would probably be a good day to sit next to a cozy fireplace. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Uh -huh. Right, so you're sitting inside. Oh, it's so nice. Nice and cozy, nice and warm. All right, let's see. Vera Kalugina says, In Japan, in ancient times, kids must take their old parents to the mountains to die. There are some films. Interesting, interesting. Uh huh. And I'm curious, how do they know if they're going to die? What happens if they bring them there, but the parents live for like you know, another year or something. Do you, <laughs> do you hang out in the mountains? But I bet they have, I bet they know, right? They probably have a way. All right. Okay. Da, 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 da. Let's do the quote. All right. This is quote number four for tonight. All right. Okay. Let's do pronunciation to start before we start analyzing it. Repeat after me. The most difficult thing is the decision to act. The rest is merely tenacity. Uh huh. All right. So the most difficult thing is the decision to act. The rest is merely tenacity. So we have a couple words here that I think are worth talking about. First, let's take a look at merely. All right. What does merely mean? Let's see, we'll put it bold, we'll underline it, and we're going to find the definition. Merely. What does merely mean? Hmm. So it's merely, it's, it's describing something. Merely. Hmm. Let's go to the dictionary. We're going to find some nice synonyms for merely. And we'll hear the pronunciation too. Merely. 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 Uh-huh. Okay. So, here we go. Similar. Ooh, I highlighted them all. Great. Similar. Only. Purely. Solely. Simply. Entirely. Just. But. Yeah, they're kind of getting a little bit farther away down here. But only. Purely. Solely. Simply. Uh-huh. All right. Guzal Gaisina says simply. Uh-huh. Leah Huda says only, that's right, okay. So we have just and only, right? Uh-huh. So let's see, we'll bring those back here. Just, only, they had simply, right? So it's just merely, it's just whatever, right? Uh-huh. Muslim Sones says jello, I think you mean hello. <laughs> hello, welcome. All right, so the phrase here is... Uh, let's see, we'll do underline merely tenacity. All right, so we need to know what does the word tenacity mean? Hmm. Huh? There we go. All right, Muslim Son 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 Mez says, How are you? I'm great. Thank you for asking. All right. So let's see. Maybe we'll do this. First we'll look up the word tenacity. Uh, let's see, one second. We'll go like this. We'll talk about just tenacity, and then we'll talk about the phrase merely tenacity. All right, can you guys tell me, give me some other words or ways to describe the word tenacity? What does tenacity mean? Hmm, what do you think? Can you beat me before I go to the dictionary? Mm hmm. -hmm. So they're going to give us some nice sim synonyms. Ooh, UK Kawaii says, God decision. Hmm. 
I don't know. Huh. Huh. Well, let's see. Let's put it in here. And let's uh, hear their pronunciation. Tenacity. 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 Uh-huh. And the Americans, we make this T kind of sounds like a D. So tenacity. Tenacity. Uh-huh. There's a D sound right there. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how the British would do it. Tenacity, maybe. But they probably pronounce the hard T when the Americans turn it into a D. Okay, here we go. All right, let's see. Da, 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 da. The first one, it says the quality or fact of being able to grip something firmly. Grip. Grip means to grab something with your hand and squeeze. But uh, that's not quite what we're looking for. It's the right idea, but that would fit in a different situation. All right, Leila Almeida says, how can I say in English, not give up? Mm hmm I think that is what we're looking for. So here we go. The quality or fact of being very determined. Determination. Mm hmm So similar, persistence, pertinacity, determination, perseverance, doggedness. They even have more. Oh, boy. Single-mindedness, strength of will, firmness of purpose. Strength of purpose. Resolution. Wow, we could go all day here. Okay, so here we go. Tenacity is the quality or fact of being very determined. All right, determination. You want to do something. You're determined. I will make it happen. Okay, all right. So if we want another way to say merely tenacity, we can combine one of these with one of these. So we'll say... I see, and the phrase is, is, da, 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 da. the rest is merely tenacity. So we could say, everything else is simply determination. All right, let me make this a little bit better. Maybe I'll move it over. Okay, so if we want another way to say this phrase, the rest is merely tenacity, we could say everything else is simply determination mm -hmm. or doggedness, perseverance, making the, the choice to move forward, right? See, Leila Almeida says, so the important is the first step and keep going. <laughs> so, uh-huh, uh-huh, right. So the important is the first step. That's right. When we get to the quote, the most difficult thing is the decision to act. Right, exactly. So the most difficult thing is to take action. After that, you just have to keep going, be disciplined, have determination, which in itself is, you know, a challenge. But sometimes just getting out there and doing, make, taking that first step, ooh, then it starts the momentum. It starts your energy to move forward and things become bigger and they build on each other and it's like dut, 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 right uh-huh uh-huh and uh this is uh a, a, kind of a separate quote but related i like it says say less do more right so if we're talking about doing something doesn't cut it right it doesn't count oh i'm going to build a business oh i'm going to read a book mm-hmm doesn't matter, right? Because it's talk, 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 talk until you do it. Uh -huh. And I'm learning, this is just my experience. The people that I think are the wisest that I've come, that I've met in my life, they usually don't say that much, especially if it's unnecessary. When you ask them, they will say a lot because they probably want to help you. But they don't feel the need to tell everybody everything because they're more worried about actions, about doing things. When we talk so much, it takes time, it takes energy, and it doesn't mean we're moving forward. <laughs> That's a challenge. Ooh, that one is a challenge, to say less and do more. Mm -hmm. Let's see. UK Kawhi, can we say tenacity is keep moving? Well, it's similar. Tenacity means to keep holding on, to keep doing something, right? Uh, the ability kind of to be stubborn, right? To be so focused and you're just going to move forward and keep doing it and keep doing it, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. So let's do pronunciation and then we're going to take a look at who is Amelia Earhart, okay? So repeat after me. Here we go. 
The most difficult thing is the decision to act. The rest is merely tenacity. All right, so that's pronunciation. Let's see, Leila Almeida says, but when people decide the first step, people start changing their life. Yes, uh -huh. with action, right? Not with words. Words sound nice and they give us good ideas, but action is the one that actually changes things. Mm -hmm. Let's see, UK Kawhi says, what about concern? And do you mean the definition of concern? Like you're concerned or you're, or you're thinking about something? Let's take a look, if this is what you mean. All right, concern. 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 If it's a verb, it means to be about something. Like the story concerns a friend of mine, it's about something. Um, if it's a noun, it, we're talking about anxiety, worry. I'm not quite sure if that's what you meant. Uh -huh. It could also be a matter of interest, of, a, of importance to someone. Okay? All right. So the most difficult thing is the decision to act. Take action, do something, and the rest is merely tenacity. Repeating, right? Taking more action, keep going, uh-huh. Let's see. Let's see, Shora Zadhush says, hello and action speak louder. Yes, they do. That is a wonderful idiom. Very, very good. Actions whoop, speak louder than words, right? Uh-huh. So it's an idiom because there's kind of a hidden meaning there because actions don't actually speak. Yeah, they don't make noise, but when we're talking about speak, we're talking about communicate, right? When you do something, people are like, ah, oh. it communicates that you've taken action, that you've done something, and you can see results, right? But when we just talk, 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 we might say the most beautiful things, but at the end of the day, if there's no action, the words were kind of wasted, uh-huh. All right, so there we go. So let's talk about Amelia Earhart. Very interesting lady. All right, let's see. Here she is. Okay, so um, she lived a while ago. Here we go. So we have the black and white pictures. Her name is Amelia Earhart. She's an Ameri she was an American aviator, right? So an aviator is a person who flies airplanes. They fly aircraft, stuff like that. So here we go. Amelia Earhart, Amelia Mary Earhart was an American aviation pioneer and author. Earhart was the first female aviator to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. She set many other records, wrote best-selling books about her flying experiences, and was instrumental in the formation of the 99s, an organization for female pilots. Hmm. If we say someone w was instrumental, that means they are very important in making something happen, like a very, very important piece of the puzzle, right? Okay, so she was born on July 24th, 1897 in Atchison, Kansas, United States. All right, let's take a look. Where is Kansas on the United States map? All right, so Kansas is right pretty much in the middle there, right? So there's Kansas. Before we were at Florida, I'm from Minnesota. New York is over here and California is here, but Amelia Earhart was born in Kansas. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, she disappeared, right? She was flying. She was trying to fly around the world and she disappeared, right? They assumed that her plane crashed, but they never, I don't think they ever found her body or her plane. So on July 2nd, 1937, she was only 39 years old. And look how much she accomplished, right? In 39 years. Incredible woman. So she was en route. That means she was on her way to Howland Island from Leh, Papua New Guinea. Mm -hmm. And she's known for, if we say someone is known for something, they're famous for something. When you think of this person, this is what you think about. She's known for many early aviation records. So flying records, records or achievements that have to do with uh, airplanes, aircraft, stuff like that. Including, she was the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. So if you fly solo, that means one person. <laughs> Only you and the airplane, right? And, and gas and fuel and food, and stuff like that. But only one person. So she was the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. Pretty cool. All right. See, Leo Huda says, I got to go, teacher. Thanks for the info. Wish you always the best. 
Wonderful. Okay. Have a wonderful day and, or a wonderful night, I guess. Thanks for participating. Okay. So this was Amelia Earhart, incredible woman. Mm -hmm. If if you have extra time, it's it's worth reading about her. You could go to Wikipedia. She just did incredible things. Okay. So she was the one who said the most difficult thing in, is the decision to act. The rest is merely tenacity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was quote number four. So today we did quotation illumination number two. All right, and let's take a look. So we analyzed inspiring quotes from successful people. That was our goal. And cha-ching, we did it. All right, so let's see. Improve your English, become more valuable. Improve your skills, be able to help yourself and help others do more things. Make your life more incredible. All right, so if you like our stuff, make sure to subscribe. Let's watch the animation. Du, 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 du. Uh -huh. If you're already subscribed, hit the bell button. More animation. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, all right, let's take a look at the closing picture. Here we go. Ooh, interesting. I added a little bit of fantasy this time in this picture. Okay, so I'm trying something. When I finish my lives, I show a picture and we will talk about it. So let's see. What do you guys see in this picture? How would we describe this picture? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. What do you think? How would you describe this picture? I say, you Q Kawaii says, can I share my favorite quote? Sure. That's what we're here all about today is quotes. So yes, go ahead. What is your favorite quote? And while she's sharing that, you guys tell me, what do you see in this picture? Mm-hmm. You see, Leila Almeida says, a balloon and a hand. Aha. Uh -huh. And this is a special kind of balloon. It's called a hot air balloon. All right, so there we go. And they call it hot air balloon because they use a burner, hot air balloon burner, to send fire up into the balloon. Not to burn the balloon, but to send hot air because the hot air will rise, right? And it's there's the balloon is big enough and it will pick up the basket and it, it will go, right? So it's called a hot air balloon. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see, UQ Kawhi says, you save a girl, you save generations. Mm -hmm. I assume uh, because women can have babies, right? <laughs> so then the next generations can go on. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, Vera Kalugina says, God's help. And are you describing the picture, I assume? Is that like the hand? Well, let's see. So we have a hand. Aha. Uh -huh. Guzal Gaisina says extended stone palm. Huh? We have a we have a hand with the palm up, the palm facing up, and the fingers are straight out, so there's a flat hand. <clears throat> Excuse me, one second. <clears throat> okay, so we could say they carved this hand from the rock, right? They carved the hand from the rock, which means they had to use tools and cut the rock and all that stuff. <clears throat> so before, I think it's just a fantasy picture, but, you know, if it was real. They had to cut the stone and create the hand, right? And I guess I guess the hand can function as a landing pad, all right? So what is a landing pad? This would be a landing pad. All right, so this could be like for a helicopter on top of a building or something, right? But we could say this functions as a landing pad because the hot air balloon can come and land, can stop, can set down on top of the hand. All right. So the hand was part of the mountain, part of the canyon with the mountains on the side. There's a, a valley down below. All right. Let's see. Uh, Guzal Gaisina says a magical castle in the fog. Yes. In the background, there is a castle and it's kind of down in the valley and it's a big castle. It has pointy tops. And it's kind of hidden. Yes, it's in the fog. And the fog is basically just clouds that come down low and are close to the ground. Mm -hmm. Leila Almeida says, this hand, I feel Jesus. Okay. 
All right. Uh huh. So it's a beautiful picture. We could kind of say it's misty and foggy uh, because you can't see everything at the bottom because there's clouds. All right. So we have a hot air balloon. We could say it's striped, right? Striped red and white. A striped red and red and white hot air balloon. And it could be just taking off. Maybe it just left. Or it's about to set down. Maybe it's about to land. Hopefully, the wind doesn't blow too hard, or it might be difficult to land on the hand. Right. Okay. All right. So I'm going to turn up my music. I'm going to say thank you in the comments, and I'm going to be out of here. Let's see if it starts. Okay, thanks everyone for attending this live lesson. Take care and I'll see you soon. Okay, bye-bye.